In both our first reading and our gospel, we hear about Satan, the evil one, the devil. Uh, Jesus brings up Beelzebub and the prince of demons here in our gospel, and they accuse him, they accuse Jesus of being possessed by the devil. It's always interesting to me this fascination that many people have with the devil. When I uh, go into high schools and I give vocation presentations, I talk about priesthood and the church and things, the two questions I'm always asked without fail, how much money do you make and have you ever done an exorcism? <laughs> and so I tell them it doesn't matter and no. <laughs> But this fascination is what starts to get some people into trouble, but it's also just odd to me. I mean, even in our gospel today, Jesus makes this, for lack of a better word, controversial statement when he talks about this unforgivable sin, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Well, that's had scripture scholars up in arms. Well, what is that unforgivable sin? How do we know when we've done this? Like, where, where's the line drawn, right? And in these classes, and even with random people, once they find out you're a priest, the, the, the devil stuff automatically comes up. Have you ever done an exorcism? Have you ever seen the devil? And, well, every day I see the devil. But, um, but it's with this fascination that, that we, we're looking at, at the spiritual life in the wrong way. Why do we want to focus on the demons and on uh, the devil and the sin against the Holy Spirit when all that leads us to, if you find it, is nothing good. Nothing good comes from anybody or anyone who found the devil when they were looking for him. And if you look, you don't even have to look that hard. You'll find him. But those who look for the Holy Spirit, those who look for God, those who come to the sacraments and they have a prayer life and they look to become saints, their lives are so much better than anyone who is looking for stuff on the devil. And that goes from like the serious, like getting involved in satanic worship and doing weird rituals out in the forest preserve, which does happen, to the more seemingly innocent things of, oh, I'm going to go have, have tarot cards read on my life, or let's pull out that Ouija board this Halloween. And from, the in, from the most seemingly innocent to the, the gravest and most dangerous, the evil one is there waiting for a door to be opened that he can get in. But if we don't worry about that stuff and we focus on the gospel on the fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, defeating all of the evil one's tactics, including the fear of death, then we have nothing to fear. All we have is the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. And those friends are much better than anything you'll get from any of those weird movies that they make. And it's so easy to get down that path. And so we just have to focus on the basics, because just as it's easy to, to move away from the church, it's also just as easy to just stay in the protection of the church. It goes to daily prayer, receiving the Eucharist, and going to confession. It's really that simple. The, if you talk to any exorcist, and while I'm not an exorcist, I don't do exorcisms, uh, but I do know the exorcist for the archdiocese, He'll be the first to tell you that one good confession is more powerful than a hundred exorcisms. And it's the humility and the realizing that we can't do it on our own that makes us more like God. And we really just have to look to Mary. Because another thing an exorcist will tell you other than the confession is more powerful than a hundred exorcisms is that the person the devil hates the most is Mary. The devil hates our Blessed Mother. Why? Because he couldn't touch her. Mary's fully human, my sisters and brothers, 
There's nothing divine about her. She's just as human as you and I, a human person with a human nature. And she never sinned. The devil's tactics never worked on her. From the moment of her immaculate conception, her whole life was saying yes to God. And so if you ever feel like you're starting to get into trouble with the devil, pray a Hail Mary. That's a strong, powerful prayer. Because we're calling on the intercession of the strongest woman our world has ever seen. Sin couldn't touch her. So daily prayer, receiving the Eucharist, becoming who we receive, and then humbling ourselves in the sacrament of reconciliation. And that's, that's important. Because when we start thinking that we can do it on our own, that's really when trouble begins. And it starts with, oh, I don't need to go to confession. God forgives me. He's very merciful. He's all loving. Who needs the sacrament? Who needs the sacrament? Jesus gave us the, gave us the sacraments to help us. Why would he give us something we don't need? That doesn't make sense, right? But that's where it begins. I don't need that because Jesus loves me anyway. And then that quickly turns into, oh, well, I don't need the Eucharist. I don't need to come to Sunday Mass. I can just sit at home and listen to my Christian podcast. And, and oh, Father once said, I just have to pray Hail Mary. I'll be fine. Not what I said. But this is where the thinking goes, right? So I don't need to come to Mass on Sunday. I just sit at home, listen to my Christian podcast. I'll say that Hail Mary. I'll be fine. And then it turns into, well, I'll just listen to my Christian radio station. I'll rock out to some Matt Maher, and I'm, that's good. That's all I need. And then, then it goes into, well, you know, ACDC is kind of Christian, right? I mean, they sing Highway to Hell, and, you know, they talk about heaven and, and hell and things. Well, I'll just start listening to them. That's, that's going to do it for me. And then before you know it, you're completely removed from the faith, completely removed from the church, to the point where you probably even say, well, is God even there? Does he even exist? Because it wasn't, I didn't see him in all these other things that I was able to live without. And then we're in no man's land. That's actually where we get into the part of the gospel where Jesus says, you can't plunder a strong man's house unless you tie up the strong man. And when we get to that point of totally rejecting everything the Lord has given us, we've tied ourselves up. So friends, let's go back to the basics. Pray every day. Receive the Eucharist. Definitely on Sunday like we all are here today. But even daily Mass, if you can get to a church before or after work to come to daily Mass and receive the Eucharist daily, that's, that's even better. Go to confession. Even if you haven't been to confession in 40, 50, 60 years, maybe it's not since your first confession in second grade when we made you do it. Go back. It's the first step in seeing true humility, in opening your heart and saying, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I need you. That's how we keep the devil away. That's how we don't even need to worry about that unforgivable sin. We just focus on how do I become a saint? How do I love others as much as God loves me? And how do I use all of these great resources that Jesus has given us to become that love? So friends, let's start focusing on that. Let's put all our energies on how to love and to be loved. And our lives will just be so much better.